everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern. The signal boxes are now finished and one of them is off on its way to its lucky winner. So where do we go from here? So in this video I'm going to go through step by step on the process on how I'm going to tackle this build. Um, especially for some of the new subscribers who are interested in scratch building um, which is great because I often get look at the comments and people um, are going off and making their own stuff making their own scratch buildings which is it's brilliant uh, so uh, I'm really chuffed that uh, I'm inspiring some of you guys to actually have a go so firstly we have our photograph here and um, it looks quite straightforward enough um, it's just a box with an overlay of bricks on this side on that side so how do I get my sizes well I have already left a space of 100 mil by 55 mil, which I think is plenty enough for this building. So let's work out the sizes. So the first thing we want to do is work out the heights um, of this building. Um, we've got a little bit of a clue there because we've got the footstep at the base of the door there, so we can work out the height from there to that joint there where the actual um, water storage um, tank is on the top so we have our brick sheet there which is the Metcalf brick sheet and if we look at the bricks there if we can look see if it's the same pattern it looks to be the same pattern as we got bricks and half bricks so basically we could work out how many bricks it is and right away across right across there and then we'll um, get our widths that way it's a long process but um, it's worth it if you want to get it right it's important to have these first because uh, this governs the style that you need for your um, building these windows are the ratio industrial windows and if you can compare that with the photograph it's almost identical it's not a hundred percent but I'd accept that and I do have a door which I made when I made the station doors and the windows last year so I've always kept this one cause why it's blue? Hmm. I could ask the same question but if you look at the photograph it's blue so we're looking at this photograph yet again the reason being is that brick building there which is attached to the water tower not only that if we look closer to the top of the water tower important details yet again a walkway with handrails and if you look even closer to the left hand side here you can actually see the ladders coming up to meet the handrails. I've counted the bricks and I've got some rough calculations here. Um, so this section here is about four and a half bricks, so that's roughly about eight millimeters. So we've got eight, and we've got five and a half full bricks across there, so that comes twelve millimeters. Then we got 11 millimeters for the window then obviously it's going to be a mirror image again so it'll be 12 and 8 so if we add all them up we shall come to a nice round figure in here 10 dash 
Look at that, 50 mil. So just by counting bricks gets you the end wall. Um, as you can see, it was 46 bricks from the floor level to the height of where the tank starts. So we've sussed out the end wall. So now we're going to look at the front wall. Now I'm presuming back in the Victorian times they kept all these dimensions on the end wall the same as the front but the only way to check that is to count the bricks. So if that pattern is the same there as it is there then we know that we more or less can get our dimensions. Now we know the height, we've got the height already, so it's basically the width what is what we're after. At least to that point there. And looking at this photograph again, I don't think that little building there on the end is attached. I mean look at the space we've got between there and there. I think that is a separate building like we have here. So as we look at this photograph again, it's not even the same height and it looks a lot, lot closer here than what it does there. And if you look here, there's a tiny, tiny slope towards what I'm presuming is the front. So I think, well, I'm positive now that this is a separate building. So now we have the front wall and as you can see there is a slight difference it's only 10 millimeters from the edge of the door to the edge of the window um, and it's 12 mil from the, the edge of the um, ridge wall to the window so the dimensions are a little bit different from the end wall and all that was done just by counting these bricks and a magnifying glass really comes in handy so now we have the two walls here this wall will be the same as the end wall that side now the back wall I don't think it would have had windows in so I'm not going to bother putting windows in the back wall so what we're after now is the height of the tank. Let's check the height of the building and see if we can get the height of the tank. So what I've done here is I've marked the base of the building. We know it's eight bricks from the underside of the window to the floor. So all I've done is calculated where the floor should be. All right, so what we'll do now is we will get our vernier and measure from the floor to the top of the wall, which is 36.56. And what we'll do then is transfer that measurement to the underside of the wall there, here. And you can see we've got an overhang there on the tank. So what we'll do then is we'll bring the vernier down, if I can do this one-handedly, to the height of the tank, which is there, which has now become 30 millimeters 0.5. So what we'll do then is we will add the scale, which is 4 millimeters. So we shall take it back up to 4 millimeters. That brings it to 35 point, should be 6, so let's take it up to there, 0.65 it should be. 0.65, Anyway, there we are, somewhere around about there. And what we'll do then is flip that over. And this is what gives us our 6 equal squares, like we have in the photographs. So now we just transfer that measurement 
onto the drawing here. And we should end up with 15.5 equal squares, six of them. So now we know the size of our panels. All we have to do now is transfer those sizes over onto here, then we've got our tank. So this is where I normally come in at the start of the video saying, right, I've got my sketch. Now it's time to start making the build. And uh, now you know the processes. It's not an easy one trying to get to all these figures. As you can see, I have changed them yet again. I've miscalculated on the bricks down the this face in two key places here and here, which has brought the building in slightly and which gives us now our equal spaces of uh, for the tank. So I've decided to use one millimeter card for this build. I'll tell you why. Um, because of the difference of the windows. Uh, before we've always had push fit windows, but these have got to be stuck on from the back. So hence why um, I'm using one millimeter card. Uh, but I'll probably use two millimeter card to strengthen it up. So just make sure when you cut the card, all your lines are nice and straight. And uh, make sure if you're using a scalpel, make sure that the scalpel is vertically up when cutting. So now we have a front and back wall and our two side walls. Now because the side walls are almost square, I have marked out where the 51 millimeters is because I've taken one millimeter off either side for the thickness of the card going this way. So, now we mark out the front wall. So we take the measurements of the door and put it bang smack in the middle. which is 47.5 because the front wall according to the drawing is 94 millimeters and then we measure our door now the door will be a push fit so what we'll do on the back of this wall we'll probably add a little bit more card for strength so that's 17.5 Checking I've got the door width correct. And then we mark the door out. And then this is where you can cheat because you can use the door to mark the radius. But what I will be doing with this building is I'll be adding a 2mm concrete base so I can add some details on the inside. When I'm marking out um, for windows and doors, I like to have two rulers. Um, so it just makes it just a little bit easier for marking out off your lines. One is a straight edge and one for doing the measurements. So what I've done now is I've just measured up for the windows and to get the radius on the top of the window there I've just found out a little 6mm washer which is exactly the same radius and that's the top of the window and I just placed the 6mm washer on the top and then draw around it because 
because that, these windows you can't draw around because of a flat uh, edge on them and you need that flat edge because you have a recess on the back to set the glazing into so for cutting out the windows and doors just make sure that you press firmly down on the, the rule to stop it from moving as you're cutting through the card and keep the blade up against the rule now freehand the radiuses are a little bit different so just make sure to start just that you've gone through the card and then just gently gently turn the card and just move a little bit at a time until you get the radius cut and hopefully you've gone through all the card if not just repeat the process once you've cut out the card just make sure your window's got enough room to move from side to side you need at least a millimeter gap all the way around the window to allow for the brick sheeting to go in and glue uh, onto the back face of this wall uh, as you can see uh, my blade is starting to tear the card so it's time to change the blade sometimes um, it's just probably the tip that's gone so what I tend to do is just um, make sure you've got your safety glasses on it's just snap the top off and you'll be able to use the rest of the edge of that blade but I'll be using that for cutting the 2 mil card later on in the meantime for fine cuts it's a new blade so now I'm cutting the brick sheet um, the front and back walls are exact to size so you make them t for the exact width but the side walls you make them that one and a half mil longer either side because remember at the start we reduced these by three millimeters to allow for the thickness of the card and card sheet. So that's 53, 53, and then we'll just cut that. So here we have the, the back side of the front of the um, water tower, and um, as you can see, I've reinforced the entrance here with another piece of card reason being is because the door itself is 2.5 thick so when that's pressed into the wall we get a nice flush finish so before I start cutting out for the windows or doors I'm just checking to make sure that my corners once they are together are virtually seamless So what I'm doing now, before we um, move on to the doors and windows, I'm just strengthening all the side walls. So I'm just marking out where the 2 mil card would go on the back walls and front walls. Because what I'm going to do next is apply the ledge there for the tank to sit on and also reinforce the bottom. So I've strengthened it up a little bit, I've added uh, the base plinths there which will give us a nice support when it sits on the concrete base and the support there for the tank when I come to do the tank. Um, one thing you need to bear in mind when you're adding strengthening cards is to make sure if you've got windows like this that you've got plenty of room on the inside here so you don't clash with any windows. Just uh, thought I'd mention that. So. Now we're ready to cut out for the doors and windows. So like in previous videos, we have cut the the sheet, the brick sheet, and then folded it around. Now this is this is going to be no difference. Um, the only difference being is I want more of the card on this face. The reason being is I want to have 
more of an overlap so we can glue these windows nice and flush uh, so there's no card edge um, stopping the windows from going in so basically what we'll do this time around is we shall split the window brick paper in half and then fold the whole lot round so that it's nice and flat here and here which will allow the window to sit nice and flat on these faces here so it's a nice straight cut along the bottom of the window right into the corners make sure you get right into the corners and then we shall split the paper right down the middle But you still want some of that overlap to come to the top half of the window. So what we'll do is we'll come away a little bit. To the centre and to the centre. And then split it there and then split it there. And hopefully we shall just be able to push that through. And those edges come flat on there. Once they are glued and there's no sharp card sticking through. So what I'm trying to get at is different windows need different techniques on how we fit them. And you should end up with something like that. So what I've done there is, as you can see, I've folded the card round and I've used a screwdriver to push the card nice and flat that way and that way and then just press them home and I flipped it round and I've got the screwdriver again and just rolled it backwards and forwards so we get a nice round edge on the top and hopefully once that dries the window should fit in there perfect so as you can see I've, I've done all the windows I've um, opened up the card ready to receive the windows but um, um, I'm going to leave the windows for now because I've already painted them white and they're not quite dry yet but um, even at this early stage of the build I'm thinking about how I'm going to get the LED into the lower part of the border tower and what I've done here on the on the base here I've just cut two millimeters of the card away and then once this lower pieces assembled I can just put a bit of card in the corner to hide the LED so now we're ready to assemble it all um, like I said the windows can go in later but um, this is the fun part I think we've done all the hard work we've done all the measuring now we can do all assembling. So as you can see the tank is split up into two sections on this wall. So we have a little joint here in the two. So we've got two separate tanks. So I've bared that in mind when I come to build the tank. I'll make sure I've got a split of two tanks. Mm -hmm. 